It's some brand new music from our guest today here on Jazz New England, saxophonist, composer, band leader, Daniel Bennett and his band. Peace and Stability Among Bears is that new project, one of uh, many originals, this one called The Lost Treasure of uh, Lunta. We're at 211. Great to have you along on this Wednesday edition of Jazz New England, only here on New England's Jazz and Folk Station. We are listener-supported WICN in Worcester, and we say a good hello to Daniel Bennett. Daniel, thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure. Happy to be here. This music is going to be uh, released at the next gig, which is uh, tonight. Yes, tonight in Boston at the Liberty Hotel in Beacon Hill. Um, the, the new CD is out. We're very excited about it. Peace and Stability Among Bears. <laughs> which is the third in a, a trilogy, you said. That's right, Joe. So it's a, uh, we have a trilogy of albums called the Bear Thompson Trilogy. Um, the first one was called A Nation of Bears, followed by a disc called The Legend of Bear Thompson. <laughs> and then today, the uh, Peace and Stability Among Bears. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Well, we got to talk about this. Yes. You, you obviously like bears. Yes, we have a little thing for bears. Um, and I always tell people, you know, you can't hate us. You can't hate our music because if you hate our music, you hate bears. And, you know, it's just not right. So, um, yeah, there's the, the, uh, another thing, too, is there, uh, this, the CD has a cartoon on the inside, the CD jacket. Um, and it's a little storyline that follows along with the music. Um, and people always ask me, is the, hey, is the music programmatic? Like, is this song supposed to be about here's the bear doing this or that? <laughs> and I actually say, no, it's actually the opposite. The, the, the artwork is uh, pro programmatic and thematic based on the music. So I give the music samples to an artist, and then they come up with a theme. No kidding, no kidding. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, c describe that uh, cover, if you would. Yeah, well, okay, so on, <laughs> on the cover, we, we, there's a, it's like an old western kind of, we're looking at the front of the CD, and it's like an old Western showdown between two bears, and there's a plane kind of flying overhead, too, which kind of makes you wonder if this is like sort of a time warp or what's going on here. And uh, my artist, whose name is Tim Banks, he did a lot of work for Cartoon Network and some other things, and I kind of gave him free reign. I said, wow. look, I, I want the bear thing. There's a few characters that I want to include, Bear Thompson, the local sheriff, a, a, few, a few names that I want you to use, but... Everything else is totally up to you. I'm thinking of Bear Bryant, some other. Are there were any jazz bears? And nobody had a name bear in the world of jazz, <laughs> no, huh? Well, not that I'm aware. We'll have aware. to research that. Right. <laughs> he is Daniel Bennett. Daniel, originally from uh, Rochester, you spent a lot of time in Boston. You went to NEC and kind of spent some time after that in this in, in the area, right? Yeah. So yeah. I moved up to Boston in 2002 to go to uh, the conservatory um, and ended up living in town for close to eight years in Boston performing. So much music, right? So much music yeah. happening in Boston, so many amazing musicians to learn from and to, to collaborate with. Great experience. And you told me NEC was the place you wanted to go for your uh, graduate degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. NEC was was um, kind of my goal. Um, I was fortunate enough to, to study with um, Ken Randowski, who was the classical teacher, and I also studied with Jerry Berganzi and George Garzone. Um, took some ensembles with uh, drummer Bob Moses. Um, Bob Brookmeyer. So wow. I got, I was kind of lucky enough, or maybe a little crazy in the sense that I ended up doing a little bit of jazz and classical sure. when I was there. Um, but it, in the end, it was a good experience. You know, before you come to a school like NEC, I mean, you, you obviously do the research. You see who teaches there. Did you pretty much get the chance to study with those you wanted to study with? I did, and I was very grateful. I mean, my, I, I wanted to get the classical training. And Ken Radnovsky, who plays with the Boston Symphony, Boston Pops, he's soloed with the New York Phil. He, he was perfect. Yeah. He's a, a, a hardcore, rudimentary kind of um, classical saxophonist. So I got to learn all the chops and technique things from him and embouchure. And then I was, um, and I wanted to study with Jerry Berganzi, who um, Jerry's kind of a guru for yeah. um, ex jazz harmony and intervallic relationships, ryth rhythm, uh, just, you know, a whole wealth of knowledge from Jerry. Man. What, uh, playing both classical and jazz, I mean, what's the approach there? Do you have to switch hats? Is it all... You know, the, uh, the, 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 the short answer to that is yes. You really do have to put on a different, um, a different hat, but a lot of the fundamental concepts to playing the saxophone are consistent between both disciplines, and I firmly believe that. Um, the bulk of what I do now is jazz, mm -hmm. but my classical training has really allowed me the freedom and flexibility to play jazz. So there is a underlying consistency 
that you have to achieve as a sure. wind player. Yeah. Well, and as critics have pointed out, and any astute listener would uh, see or hear, uh, your music has a little folk element in it, too. So you've got uh, all these things going. With the folk music, how did that, uh, you must have liked, as you said, folk music all along. Yeah, I mean, I, I grew up listening to folk music and rock. I mean, I grew up in the 90s when, you know, um, alternative music was, was kind of breaking out. And um, I, I always wanted to play the saxophone more like a folk instrument. I wanted to treat it, and it always bothered me that, you know, over time I was, I become so immersed in jazz that I had lost a little bit of my identity or my true passion to make the saxophone a little more melodic so it's always been a goal i don't know if i'm there yet but i'm getting closer to to having the saxophone be just a melodic instrument like a guitar or something so th really three different approaches to the horn then you're playing that classical music you do improvis improvisational jazz yeah. and then you're trying to get that melodic folk thing going man you're schizophrenic huh? <laughs> that's my wife says too <laughs> <laughs> we are speaking with uh, our friend Daniel Bennett, saxophonist, composer, band leader. You can see him tonight at the uh, Liberty Hotel, and that's uh, 215 Charles Street in Boston from uh, 6 to 9. Tell us about your band. Um, well, the band is, the full band is saxophone, drums, bass, and guitar. Um, I've got two groups. Um, since I'm now living in New York, I've got a band there with Brian Adler, Mark Coccio, and Mark Lau. Um, but in Boston, I've got a an equally fantastic group uh, comprised of Rick Landwehr on the drums, Chris Hirsch on guitar, um, sometimes Asaf Kahadi on the guitar, who, I, who has been yep, here we know Asaf. in the past. Yep. Um, and I'm forgetting, oh, and Jason Davis on the bass. Okay. Um, so that's, that, okay. that rounds it up. You know, we were talking off the air about how NEC's uh, community seems to stick together. You guys, uh, you know, you meet guys there, you play with them. When you went to New York, are the guys you met down there, were they NEC connected? You know, that's... They are actually, I mean, two two of the guys in New York that I play with, Brian, who's a drummer, Brian Adler, um, went to NEC with me, and Mark Coccio, guitarist. I, and, and it's, you know, for me, I, I kind of became friends with them through NEC. Um, I don't know if, if I, you know, necessarily used NEC as like a litmus test for the band, but it certainly played a part just because I already knew them and, and was friends with them okay. going into it, yeah. You said you moved to New York last summer. What uh, precipitated that uh, that big move? Yeah, um, I had been coming to New York a lot, um, performing, and um, I, I knew that eventually I wanted to expand the operation, um, and I certainly didn't want to abandon what I was doing in Boston and New England. So my goal was to just um, to make the move and to have to just expand things, to still come to Boston. So we're in Boston every, every just about every Wednesday at the Liberty Hotel. Mm -hmm. And we do other club days, the Beehive, other other uh, venues around Boston. But um, the goal was to expand, I guess, what I was doing, pretty yeah. much. And that's looks like it's happened. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're 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 grateful that things have have started to click. Um, we've got a a brand new concert series that we're started that we started in New York and the Upper West Side at the Triad Theater. Um, and our official New York uh, CD release is going to be a double bill at the Triad Theater um, with the Daniel Bennett Group and Steve Kuhn, who's a phenomenal sure, yeah. pianist, and he's going to do a solo set. So that's on May 27th, and it's very similar to something that we did in Boston for several years at the Cambridge YMCA Theater. So we're trying everything, self-producing, um, lots of club dates, festivals. Uh, it's kind of different every night. I love hearing the stories of guys and gals who make the move to New York. I mean, just in itself, it's yeah. a daunting experience. But how, how do you make those uh, initial contacts to get into the clubs and start yeah. getting things going? How, um, do you do that? how do you do you that? You know, the truth is, I uh, by the time I moved to New York, I was f somewhat fully operational in Boston with performing and networking. So I pretty much just carried it okay. into New York. I, I, I mean, Boston is... An amazing world-class city for music. So I was already doing it there. Um, certainly, there's there's um, New York's bigger, and there are other there are obstacles along the way. But I already had the momentum, maybe. Mm -hmm. With the size of New York compared to Boston, are there that many more clubs to, or places to play then? Um, yeah, there are. Um, I mean, New York. Yeah, there are. The, um, the New York scene is is enormous in some ways and somewhat small in other ways maybe just because it's a close-knit community mm -hmm. um as is the boston jazz community and boston was great too because there's a real diy ethic there's a lot of musicians that i 
that I knew in Boston, like Eric Hoffbauer, Todd Brunel, Ken Field. There are a lot of guys who set up shop in Boston and were producing their own events and curating their concert series. So Boston was is, is equally unique okay. in its own way. Interesting. We're speaking again with a saxophonist, composer, band leader, Daniel Bennett. You can see his band tonight at the Liberty Hotel, uh, Charles Street in Boston from uh, 6 to 9. Uh, it's kind of, I guess, the CD release party, right? It's coming out tonight. Yes, so. and, and we, we, you know, um, we are going to have a, a club CD release concert that we're working on at the moment. It's kind of hush-hush at the moment, but we've got okay. some, some movement on a, a really great uh, club date in Boston, hopefully in the early summer, where we'll put the disc out. Okay. Um, you know, probably for the next year, every concert is going to be the CD <laughs> release. <laughs> how, how can folks get a copy if they don't see you? Yes. In so, so the the album is is on sale. It officially hits iTunes and the internet and the web and everywhere on um, this Saturday. Um, Daniel Bennett Group dot com b e n n e t t. Um, uh, iTunes, Amazon, Rhapsody. It's okay. kind of all over the place. You've got the horn you're going to play for us a bit later, but let's go back to some music we'll, yes. uh, from, again, it's called uh, Peace and Stability Among Bears. What, what are we yeah. going to hear next? Um, you know, um, let's, let's, try, um, the, uh, let's try that song, Ghost. Okay, tell us about this. Um, so a lot of these songs have sort of a mixed meter kind of thing going on, um, some odd time signatures, but there's always kind of the um, the the underlying melodic force, and the song it, it hopefully achieves that. It's it's kind of a dark tune, and um, I, you know that's about all I can all say. All right, let's have a listen. Here's <laughs> it, Daniel Bennett. Hopefully, it'll speak for itself. <laughs> Here's Daniel Bennett from his new CD, "Peace and Stability Among Bears." <laughs> 